Here's your host for Living Successfully, Bob Keaton. It makes me kind of wonder how many folks would be listening to radio right now who would really love to be in television or would love to be in show business. Well, my guest this hour is a fellow who's done exactly that, and I don't know whether he's going to recommend it to you or not, but his name is Bill Bowman, and Bill, welcome to WRVA. Well, hi there, horror movie fans. (laughs) Oh, that's awful. <laughs> you really did that, didn't you? I certainly did. Oh, no. Uh, for years. For years. Yeah, but you didn't start off in television. I remember you won the Golden Hoo-Ha Award, whatever that, the, uh, the radio uh, broadcasting. Frank Soden Award. Yeah. Yes. yeah, that's pretty good. I that's was pretty very, good. very flattered. But I very was flattered. surprised to hear you say at that time you didn't start in television. No, I started in radio. Why? Well, that's what the manager of the station kept asking also. Why? Uh, Why? Uh, Well, it was when I was in high school, and I had... uh I had three part-time jobs. I worked in a record store. Oh. I uh, played in a dance band, and I worked at the radio station, which was actually a little FM radio station. And you this, played in a dance band? Yes, I did. What is what what trumpet? Not good, but loud. Uh-huh. Uh, I played. At, at the end of the evening, people said, boy, Bowman really played, didn't he? Uh-huh. They didn't say he played well. They just no, said he played. just played. You were there. So you, you had some music in your blood. Ah, oh, yes. You worked at a record store, and that's probably because you loved music. You were interested in that sort of thing. No, I wanted and, the money. I see. Yes, money. That's what I meant to say. And, and then you... Got into got, radio got somehow. Got into the radio stage somehow. Oh, they, uh, well, they had an opening, and um, I worked cheap. Mm-hmm. That'll help. I mean, it gets you halfway there. But <laughs> well, it, it, it got me all the way there that time. <laughs> but that was the that, that's the first time. So they that usually was, look for experience, and you couldn't put that on the resume. No, not at all. But uh, it was a little FM radio station, and this was in 1951. Mm. And FM was not real big back in 1951. That's right. I think there were about three receivers in the city. Uh huh. And we were still wondering whether it worked or not. Well, for the most part, it did. Yeah. Uh, this was up in Pennsylvania, in mm-hmm. uh, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. The radio station was WLAB, and uh, I worked there. And I, it, 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 it was a pretty good sounding station as far as technically, but um, yeah. as far as the techniques of what they did, it was a little. Uh, when they first went on the air, they actually had uh, they could play seventy eight RPMs, yeah. and they could play uh, the old thesaurus, the sixteen inch discs. Oh. That they made. They were actually um, called ETs, right? Yes, uh, electronic right. transcript or something. They like went. That. Uh, they were thirty-three and a third speed, but a seventy-eight yeah. stylus. And uh, after a little while, they decided they ought to be able to play these forty-fives, these new things that were coming out. Mm-hmm. And the manager decided instead of buying these big expensive turntables, he bought one of these little RCA adapter things that you could put about six records on, and you would push this button, and he would just start these off. But uh, on the air. If you listen to it, you could hear the records change. I mean, the one record would finish, then you'd hear this thing go in a groove and go... It, it, it wasn't a real sophisticated sound in the no, station. No, I understand. So I, I kind of fit in all right. Oh. And uh, when the... Um, two and a half years later, the station went uh, went bankrupt and went off the air. Nothing to do with you. No, I think it was just a coincidence. Okay, yes. Uh, I'm, I, I like to believe that anyway. Right, I'm sure. And uh, the manager called me in and he said, uh, you know, you're... Um, You've been a loyal employee, and you're you're pretty faithful, and you show up on time. Yeah. But um, you don't sound good. Uh-huh. You, you, you've got this uh, high pitched, squeaky voice and this uh, funny accent. Um, uh. you, you might think of doing something else. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I said, like what? He said, Well, uh, did you ever think of television? You could run a TV camera. Nobody will see you there. <laughs> That's good. So yeah, um, so yeah. I decided to go into television. Mm-hmm. And the first television job that I got was as a projectionist at uh, WLBR-TV in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, which by then was in the same building that the FM station had been in. So they knew you. Oh, they knew you'd show up on time. Well, well, at least was... they knew I knew how to get to the building. That's right. That's right. Well, that's that's not bad. You know, it's still, though, you're, what, high school at this time? You're you're a kid, right? I was in high school and radio. Or had you graduated? Okay. Um, okay. So then I went to work at the TV station. and uh, Projectionist. That's projectionist. literally projectionist, right? Yes, we're talking... film, film, 16 millimeter film, 35 millimeter slides. That was back in the days when uh, when you ran the commercials, you would put slides in the projector, and some poor soul would sit in the announce booth and actually read the copy. 
Mm. And then somebody would change the slides, which hopefully you would put in correctly so they weren't upside down and backwards. Yeah. Which yeah. Uh, I was pretty good at that. I didn't get too many of them upside down and backwards. I can remember occasionally seeing a television ID upside down oh, yeah. or something like if, that. If, if you put it in wrong. Yeah. And then one night, the uh, one of the camera operator didn't uh, didn't show up. And uh, they knew that I had somehow studied camera work, so they decided to make me the camera operator. Mm-hmm. And the uh, somebody else would put the slides and films in, so I got promoted to cameraman. Oh, and, good, uh, good. That was the uh, that was the night that I uh, I probably made TV history because I knocked the announcer down with with the camera. This was back in the early days of uh, television. Bill, this is not good form. Well, no, they, the, this, the announcer wasn't pleased about it. No, this is going the same way as that radio job. It, 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 it looked it looked bad. I mean, the voice is it one looked, thing, but knocking them down with it. Those are heavy cameras. Well, they was. still are. Well, they, well, this was back. Um, you didn't uh, you didn't zoom the camera. You didn't have zoom lenses. You actually dollied the cameras in and out. Oh, that keeps so them on had, the toes. So you had to um, uh-huh. you you set this thing to aim in and out. And it was it was a pretty primitive back in those days you didn't have all these videotapes and things like that yeah yeah and the newscast the announcer sat and read copy mm-hmm. so the first time i ran the camera on the air uh first of all you're very nervous when you do this the first time you realize there's at least 40 million people out there watching it and they're but, all saying bowman's running the camera well, Act- right of course but you're a seasoned professional now right well, no. you've been in radio uh, I- Actually, there were probably about six people watching the show, and none of them cared who was running the camera. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. The way the program started out, we had this big calendar that was hanging on the wall with, a, like, March the 4th, March the 5th, just one number. Mm-hmm. You would start out with the camera on this number, and the booth announcer would read, Good evening, today is March the 5th. Today we have war, famine, pestilence, fire. Now nah, details. In the meantime, you would pull the camera back mm-hmm. right. and the announcer would be sitting there typing and he would look toward the camera pull the copy out look at the camera and start reading during the program you would just slowly dolly in and out a little bit to change the picture okay the um, director of this program they had just hired this director from philadelphia philadelphia was the big market in pennsylvania still is oh yeah uh, and this man had the reputation of being the hanging director you don't do anything wrong because the man will be absolutely furious and I was fairly young. I guess inexperienced would be accurate. Mm-hmm. And I later found that some of this was being done for my benefit. Uh, because the engineers would turn the <laughs> headphones on through the program, uh-huh. and they would say, um, you think Bowman will do this all right? <laughs> and the other guy would say, oh, I hope so. Remember poor Fred last night. Fred was oh, the regular uh, cameraman. Uh-huh. And they're saying that the reason Fred wasn't there because he had gone out of focus and he's now in the hospital in traction. Uh-huh. That uh, they think he'll walk again, but they're not sure. So this goes okay. through the whole program. In the meantime, I keep hearing the director saying, "Bowman, at the end of the show, you have to dolly back in on that calendar." <gasps> and I want this to move. I don't want any of this wishy-washy stuff. When uh-huh. I say move, you move that camera. At the end of the program, the announcer says, well, that's it for 6 o'clock news. Hope you'll join us tonight at 11. Until then, good night. The director says, move that thing. I shoved on it. I lost control of it. The camera careened down through the studio, ran into the desk, knocked the desk down. The announcer fell on the floor. I was panning the camera around the room. I looked at the monitor and saw this debris going by. As the picture slowly faded to black. Oh, yeah. Uh, At that time, the staff scatters. Bam, I'm all Mm -hmm. alone in the studio. Right. The door opens in the back of me. I can hear the director coming in. I I can hear this fee fi fo fum Of course, we've all heard this. As he comes across. I turn, he stares down at me, and he doesn't say anything for what seemed like eternity. It was probably a minute or two. In which case, he simply says doesn't have to be quite that fast. Ah. Ah. So uh, my first experience in running camera on the air, I knocked the announcer down. The funny part was, at 11 o'clock, I got to do it again. And at the end of that... You were still employed at 11 o'clock? Well, Fred was still in the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. How are they going to replace you? And uh, (laughs) at the end of the 11 o'clock news, like I said, this was a small station. There weren't a lot of UHF viewers back in those days. Oh, this is a UHF station? Yes, it was. Oh, man, you went from FM to UHF. Oh, this is good, Bill. And the UHF, one kilowatt. On a good day, they could actually get us in the city. Yeah, that's Um, great. (laughs) At the 11 o'clock news closing, the announcer says, Well, we hope you'll join us tomorrow night at 6. Until then, good night. He covered his hands and dove under the desk for cover. (laughs) 
they say a fool never learns. This guy was this sharp. Guy learned. This guy was sharp. Cameras where you uh, broke into, t well, you a broke televisions. Which There's you a did. projectionist and a camera operator, and then that wow. station went off the air, went bankrupt and went off the air. This Which I also claim is a coincidence. coincidence. Yeah, yes, I, of course. Uh, I, but, um, yeah, you so just happened to be there. I, I just happened to be working. It, it lasted a little while after I knocked the announcer down. They didn't go off the next day. I see. There, there I was see. a period in there that they stayed. Right. I, okay, that's good. So this is all stuff that you really wanted to do, or did you just kind of, I don't want to say I fall didn't want to knock the announcer down. No, no. No. <laughs> in terms of, of work, I mean, these are things that I you... I wanted to work in television, right. You really did. TV was going to be my career. Well, how did radio happen to be your starting point? There was no television station in town. Of course. I should have known. <laughs> Silly me. I could have guessed that. <laughs> And, and Philadelphia? No, you were Lebanon, Lebanon Pennsylvania. It's about 80 miles west of Philadelphia. That was home? That's home. Grew up there? Grew up there. Parents and everything? Uh, that's where they were. They, my parents are dead now, but that's where they lived, yeah. Well, I finally left Pennsylvania to come down to uh, Richmond in 1962 because I wanted to get out of the ice and snow. And in Richmond, of course, you found... Well, the, the Yankee school I went to, they said when you cross the Mason-Dixon line, palm trees, mint juleps, no snow. Right, right. Obviously, more of that Yankee stuff that's not accurate. I see. That's, that's it. You're in tune with Living Successfully on WRVA. My guest is Bill Bowman. You might also know him as the Bowman Body. More about that later, though. You're listening to Living Successfully, hosted by Bob Keaton.